In this video, I'm going to share with you why finding the right sales market fit is critical for the success of your business. If you haven't subscribed yet, uh, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the bell button below and you'll be notified every time I post a video. Now there'll be many other topics that come out of this video today. So if this interests you, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell button and you'll be notified every time I post a video. For the last seven years, I've been selling high value enterprise SaaS software. And one thing I've learned in my journey is having a market leading product is not enough inside a world of a complex business to get them to buy. So many things inside a business can derail an opportunity and I've experienced many of them. And this video is about the most critical lesson I've learned along my time that I wish I had known from day one. So let's start by defining what is a complex sale. In this scenario about what I'm talking about, it involves where more than one or more people are involved in a buying decision and they have to seek organizational approval for purchase. Where the ticket price is at least $1,000 per month or $12,000 per year. Now it's not uncommon for a sales team or a salesperson or a startup or any B2B business to consider a sale from their perspective. So if we look at Gartner's 2019 B2B buying journey illustrative, we can see there are so many complex processes that organizations must go through in order to buy. And if we were to only consider how we sell or having product market fit as enough to be able to have this organization buy us, it is a critical error. We need to align our sales efforts to navigate this complexity with inside a business. And we can do that. The reason this is so critical for a startup or a growing B2B business who are, who are just entering a new market is because we likely have a lack of reputation or clients in that industry. And the chances of our target organizations naturally recognizing our value are minimal and they will be naturally drawn to those existing competitors in the market. As a startup or a new business, we must find a way to tip the scales in our favor and it can be done. We need to maximize our efforts and ensure our target opportunities or target organizations end up with our solution at the end of their buying journey. Now, as we can see from the Gartner Buying Illustrative, if an organization was simply to rely on product market fit, the chances are they wouldn't have a strategy to navigate the complexity of a large organization's buying journey. And that essentially is what sales market fit is, is investigating what your target markets must do in order to buy and know that better than them and be prepared to lead them through that journey to outsmart the competition to maximize your value in their eyes and make it easy for them to interact with you. So how do we begin to find our right sales market fit? And that's a great question. So the short answer is, is we need to investigate. We need to understand the influencing factors that affect each tier within our market. Then we need to go and ask questions and then apply the right strategy once we have a full picture of how it looks for our business. Now, in this uh, diagram that I'm put up, this breaks down a market into different tiers. Tier one being at the higher end and tier three being at the lower end. So we can see on tier three, the revenue in that tier would be lower than tier one. And that's because the total addressable market is larger, but also there's many more competitors in that market as well, potentially and also the features and outcomes expected from a SaaS product may be less than an enterprise client in a tier one. Now, as we're moving up the tiers into tier one, we can see the complexity in, and the time to win a deal increases for tier one, and you would expect the revenue to reflect that. Now, the competitors may change from tier three to tier one, and also the total addressable market. And so you would expect the features and the outcomes to would significantly increase with a T1 client as well. Now, most importantly on the bottom is the formal buying process gets more strict as you move along those tiers. 
And what I mean by that, in a tier three of a market, maybe the buying person may only be one uh, individual within a business. Maybe it's a small, um, small medium enterprise where there's only a sole director and they make the sole purchasing decision within that business. Or maybe it's a tier two and there's one or two people within that business that are responsible. Uh, or there's a small buying committee. Now it starts getting more formal as you move along. Maybe there's a, um, a informal business case that needs to be put towards those decision makers. Now, if we move into tier one, that's when you get into large organizations or government organizations, and there are formal procurement buying processes that are needed to be adhered to. Um, you know, probity clauses that we need to be conscious of. And we need to formulate strategies in each one of those tiers to know that process better than the organizations we're going to engage with so we can lead them through those hurdles. Now, going back to the Gartner illustration, we can see that they have four high-level requirements or four high-level gates or stages a business goes through in order to purchase. And that's problem identification, solution exploration, requirements building, and supplier selection. Now, as a startup, Sometimes it's not in our advantage to engage with the market when they've already identified the problem. With any opportunity, movement equals opportunity. So if there's movement in a business to move towards solving a problem, we have to ask what has caused that movement in the first place? How have they shaped that problem within their business or how do they see that problem within their business? Were they influenced by competitors that are in the market already. So that means the problem has been shaped to maximize their value and not ours. So we need to formulate a strategy. So there are many different areas in finding the right sales market fit that need to be considered. And it is a considered approach over the long term to build out your framework to actually lead your clients through to a, a positive buying journey with your product on the other side. And that's why product market fit alone is not enough in the world of complex sales. We need to align our sales strategy with how our target tiers or target markets and target tiers within those businesses buy. If we are leaving it up to chance and expecting our target clients to see our value at the end, it's a really big risk. And I know firsthand, it doesn't often work out to be a buying choice in our favor. Now, if you've liked this video, please hit the like button below. And if you want me to focus on anything specific in finding your sales market fit, please leave a comment and I'll make sure I make a video to help. Now, one of the main outcomes for finding your sales market fit is to make the buying experience pleasurable for not only yourself, but for your target clients as well. So they don't feel like they're being sold to, they feel like they're being helped help to the right conclusions for their business. And as a mature sales team, we really need to be able to be prepared to, be, to walk away if it's not the right opportunity. And furthermore, we need to recognize if, our, if the target client is not willing to engage with us or not willing to look at a problem from a different perspective, or they're simply treating us as a supplier and not willing to go on an engagement journey or, or a partnership journey to solve their problem for the long term, then we need to be prepared to walk away. And I've learned firsthand where I thought that I could change their mind or I've just ignored these key points at the beginning of a sales engagement and wasted six, 12, 18 months in the process where I could have been focusing on other things or other opportunities to bring in revenue into a startup, which is critical for the survival of the business. If you're interested in finding your sales market fit in the most efficient way possible, down below I have a link to my sales market fit program. Now I've learned this over many years of applying this out in the field. And I wish I had known this back when I started my sales journey, it would have saved me a lot of time and helped me close more deals quicker. So click on the link below. There's also some other resources down there about how to align your sales process to the client's buying journey. I'll continue to add these videos on the different sections of finding your sales market fit in the coming weeks.
and I hope to see you next time.